They tell me that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. After my experience at Meekum, I tend to agree. I've known for years that televised auctions were big money events from watching them myself. When I thought that I would be able to reach out and not only participate in one of these auctions, but be able to bring something home, my hands were lopped off at the wrists by those with money to burn. And I know the whole money to burn thing is a generalization made by those who can't afford to play in the big leagues. I'm well aware of that. This though, this was a little something more. Before I go any further forward with my story, allow me to backtrack a bit and recap y'all with my Meekum objective. My goal was to buy at the Kissimmee Meekum Auction a 1990 Chevrolet Beretta Indy pace car. And if you're not a regular here on the channel, I have a thing for the Beretta. Already owning four of them and four other yet-to-be collector cars, and while they're not Duesenbergs or Hemikuda convertibles, I do consider myself a car collector, as they are all well stored in my 30x40 shop and I take as good a care of them as I can, and they rarely leave the garage. That being said, I obviously know what kind of market is out there for each of my cars, being plugged into each community according to the car. So when I saw this particular Beretta scheduled for auction not two hours from me, of course I wanted to take a shot at it. The Beretta was part of an estate that housed a ton of Indy 500 replica pace cars, ranging from a 87 Chrysler LeBaron to a highly coveted 96 Dodge Viper GTS. While Berettas in general are somewhat of a rare breed anymore, they have yet to hit any kind of stride in the collector market. As the old saying goes, just because something's rare doesn't mean it's valuable. Hmm. Okay, so I'm the weird guy going after a car that no one else wants. Sweet! Makes life easy for me. I've seen not-so-collectible cars cross the block for literally a couple of grand. And this auction was no exception, with the same period of cars going for just that earlier in the week. A couple of grand. It goes without saying that my hopes were high. <laughs> no. No, check that. Those hopes, and only now did I realize it, were unrealistically high. Oh, I had plans for you. I was already looking at the car shows I could bring you to with the Beretta race car. Photo shoots of you and Sunstreaker, my existing Chevy Beretta Indy, together. <laughs> and late nights in the garage, applying enough wax to your teal body that your ridiculously silly 90s pace car graphics would never fade. <sighs> now I realize the recap has gone on too long, but at least now I hope you understand why I thought I could obtain my little piece of collector car heaven. I'm moving on. I'm no stranger to car auctions in general. I spent a few years with a dealer's permit and been to around a hundred auctions or so before and have actually purchased cars off the block before. Meekum, at its core, was the same as those old auctions, and because of that, it all had a very familiar vibe that probably gave me a false sense of confidence. Sure, there was a plethora more glam to it, as I had never been to an auction before that had two wet bars serving liquor right there on the bidder's floor. Uh, the Friday and Saturday cars, or the on-TV cars that go for big money and make for exciting TV are all in their own little tent outside the auction block building behind the equivalent of what would be velvet ropes. Uh, believe me, I wanted to get pics. I wanted to get video. I was so excited about getting in the car though, the three hours of sleep I had before having to get up and driving my empty trailer the two hours to get there, which my enclosed race car trailer gives my old truck fits when it's being hauled empty. And here I am trying to drive this unstable rig down the most dangerous highway in Florida. I-4 is either 9 or 90. In other words, it's either 9 miles an hour or 90, as it's the highway to Disney and all the tourist trap crap. So between hardly having any sleep and a stressful drive there, I was too exhausted to get the footage I really needed. 
Upon arriving, finding the Beretta and giving it an inspection for myself was the first priority. Like any other buyer, I wanted to know firsthand what I was getting into. Typical for a car that had sat for too long, the headliner was sagging, the serpentine belt was a lunch, and the tires were dry rotting off of it. Closer inspection also showed that the seal that had broken and that all-important rear filler panel and small scratches in random places. It's almost like a cat or some other critter had spent time crawling on it. I stood there glaring at those and other defects that might hold the car back at auction. I thought, hmm, this is a good thing. So Sunday afternoon on the last day of the 10-day auction, I sat in the bidders area and waited. The bidders area was kind of docile, not a whole lot going on, a little quiet, just as I expected. And it was all going according to plan, until it wasn't. The McMillian Estate that housed all the pace cars was announced, and it brought a big cheer from the crowd. Then the crowd grew, and each passing car started going for some kind of insane figures. 82 Camaro Z28 pace car with the dreaded crossfire engine and rust bubbles on the bottom of the doors and around the taillights sold for 7500 A non-running 84 Fiero was next for seven grand. An 87 Chrysler Baron sold for nine grand, and then the 88 Olds Cutlass convertible with sun-faded paint for an astonishing 24.5. When the Beretta came up, oh wow. I waited for the auction to go all the way down to a thousand and try to work my way up there as I had about five grand in my pocket. Before I knew it, somebody opened up the bidding at five grand. <laughs> Within seconds, it was up to seven, and as it drove off the block at a final price of $9,500, I had to take a moment to pick my jaw up off the floor and start wrapping my head around how this Indy sold for more than the Ferretta concept car ad a few years earlier. A concept car that most of its life spent in the GM toy box, sported a V8, and sold at the more prestigious Barrett-Jackson auction in Palm Beach. Estimates within the Beretta community were between six and seven. I don't think any of us saw the bid going that high. So now I don't have the car, and worse yet, I didn't even get to bid on it. Exhausted, like I am now, and knowing I have to drive my rambunctiously empty trailer home, we made our way over to the golf cart shuttle area to leave. And then as we got into the golf cart, this happens. Look, the Beretta died. Died? Ninety-five hundred dollars. I just think it was mad it wasn't coming home with me. Then it dawned on me that with the buyer's premium, tax, title, and other bullshit fees, whoever bought it was now north of 11 grand into a car that doesn't even run. And that's before the expense of transporting it home, whether the guy did it himself or hired somebody to do it. Sure, it was probably something simple like a bad gas or clogged filter, still, 11 grand for a non-running indie. What? What is happening? I'll blow your mind right in front of your face! Goodbye. Oh no! So now it's been five hours and a five hour energy later and I've only come to two conclusions. One, with the huge influx of people on the bidder's floor when that estate was announced, it must have been some kind of hype around this collection that I knew nothing about, so I must not have done my homework. And two, if it had gone earlier in the week and not been part of this collection, I would stand a much better chance of it sitting in my garage now. I think I can be at peace with it though, I mean, if I had lost it by a few hundred bucks, really, I probably would have felt worse. Now that a nice one sold for $9,500, i am going to be all over just messing with people to buy my yellow Indy, which does run, but it needs a lot of work to be on the nice one's level. 
Like those memes that try to explain the losers who have a POS version of a car that just sold a Barrett Jackson for a hundred grand? Uh, don't lowball me, I know what I got. No, I have no intention of uh, actually selling Sunstreaker, though I only gave 490 bucks for it. Well, I mean, he's got to be worth 4000 now, right? Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have fun with that one for a while. On a side note, while at the auction, I don't think I ever wanted to punch so many old guys at once. Not everyone, but a lot of the old guys that were there were just rude. They would literally just bump you aside with their nose in the air and... and just keep on walking. Like they were more important than you because they were there to spend more money than you. One of them even bumped into my girlfriend without so much as a look, and honestly, I would have given the guy shit back if security hadn't been right there within earshot. Ugh. Anyway, while the cars are freaking fabulous, some of the people there are really detracted from the experience. Would I do it again? No. I'm not saying that I'll never return to bid on a car again, it's just, with my racing career about to be kicked back into high gear, it will be a long time before I have the finances to return as a serious bidder. But if I ever do return as a bidder, I'll make sure it's on a Wednesday lot, goddammit. So there it is, just came back from my first collector car auction experience. If you have a first time story, good or bad, share it below in the comments section. I know us car guys really have great stories. This week's subscriber shoutout goes out to Rose and Sandy. If not for these two amazing women in my life, going to this auction probably wouldn't have happened. Rose has amazing patience with me as it's never easy for a girlfriend to support a man as he throws money out the window at a race car and useless shit. And Sandy for her unexpected contribution to the Beretta Indie Fund, as we all jokingly called it. I thank you and grateful for you both. And I thank the rest of you for watching as well, and for the support for the channel. Garage and race car updates are coming! Remember to check the description below for links to the Cruisers Motorsports Facebook group, the new vintage toy channel I just started, and if you're in a position to become a member of the Cruisers Patreon to help support the channel, that would be fantastic as well, my friends. And remember, those friends, they're the family you get to choose. I'll see you next time, fellow Cruisers.